So, good afternoon, uh, everybody. Uh, welcome to the webinar on holistic test descriptions for validating cyber physical energy systems, uh, which is organized by the IRIGWIT uh, Horizon 2020 Research Infrastructure Program on Smart Grids. My name is Thomas Storza. I'm from the Austrian Institute of Technology, and it's my pleasure to moderate uh, this webinar, which will take about up to 90 minutes. Uh, we have three uh, distinguished speakers. Uh, the first one is Kai Heusen from DTU in Denmark. Uh, our second speaker is Payam. Uh, he's from office in Germany and Merke Bu from Sintef in Norway. Uh, before we start the webinar, I want to give you some uh, information how we organize the webinar. Uh, during the next uh, around 60 to 70 minutes you will get an overview about our development uh, in the Periquid project which we have done related to holistic test descriptions for validating cyber physical energy systems. Uh, you will get all the information uh, about our methods together with the uh, uh, presentation from today as well as the recordings of the meeting right after the uh, uh, webinar. So uh, we will get an uh, email notification where you can find the recordings and the presentation and uh, supportive material for this webinar. During the webinar, if you have questions, please uh, put your questions into the chat um, um, uh, box. Uh, we will uh, answer all your questions by the end of the webinar. Um, moreover, I want to let you know also that this uh, webinar is supported from two IEEE technical committees, one from the IEEE Industrial Electronics Society Technical Committee on Smart Grids, as well as the IEEE SMC Technical Committee Cybernetics for Industrial Systems. Before we came to the uh, details about uh, the holistic validest, uh, validation methodology and the holistic test description, I want to give you a brief introduction about our IRIGRID project which is a, a research infrastructure project that's funded under the Horizon Europe, Horizon U, uh, 2020 um, research program from the European Commission under the research infrastructure program. <clears throat> we are a consortium of 18 European partners from 11 European countries, which uh, share uh, lab about 19 uh, laboratories to the outside world. So that means you are able to access our webinars for testing possibilities. Details are provided at our project website. Uh, the main goal of the project itself is uh, we are um, kind of research infrastructure uh, funded by the research infrastructure program of the European Commission, uh, where we have the goal to improve our laboratory possibilities and uh, services uh, in the domain of uh, power system smart grids where we focus from the technical point of view on the uh, development of validation and testing methods for smart grid systems. Uh, uh, our main focus is on power and ICT uh, systems. And uh, therefore, we have developed this holistic validation procedure, which you will get uh, more details uh, during the next uh, couple of minutes. Uh, besides that, we uh, worked also on the, uh, the improvement of validation and testing methods based on uh, simulation uh, approaches, but also laboratory uh, approaches and hardware in the loop uh, concepts. Moreover, we worked also to integrate our 19 uh, smart grid power system laboratories, um, which can be nowadays connected together for more complex experiments. Uh, that's a very brief uh, introduction. You can find more information about our project directly on the project website, and uh, we should not waste too much time for the project introduction itself. Therefore, I will um, show you the agenda for today, uh, where we're mainly giving an uh, introduction about the holistic test description and this holistic validation approach itself, why and how we developed it. That's presented by Kai uh, from DTU. Then uh, information about application experiences, because we have to use this approach inside the project, uh, but also outside the projects in linked projects and activities. Uh, and at the end, uh, that's presented by Payam uh, uh, about our uh, experiences that we have uh, gathered. And uh, at the end of the webinar, Merkebu will uh, uh, provide some uh, hands-on examples and example cases on uh, our developed methodology. Now I will give over to um, Kai, who will uh, go into details for uh, this holistic validation procedure. 
Kai should have now present the rights and should be able to share his slides. So Kai, the floor is yours. Thank you, Thomas. Thank you for the good introduction. And um, so today I will talk about this why and how about the holistic test description. Do you all see my screen? I hope so. Um, to start uh, the understanding, we should look at this smart grid and the need for testing there. We have um, the use case that we've used a lot in the Eric Grid project, coordinated voltage control. It's a very typical use case for smart grids and involves uh, flexibility from different resources. Um, and it it involves communication between the central optimization and also these different resources. So there's a control strategy that is involving distributed resources that come maybe from different manufacturers and a central coordinating control um, that's maybe from a third manufacturer. It could also involve a tap changer here, a tap changing transformer. And altogether, um, we have a voltage control problem um, where the use case is that there's a coordination and that requires communication. And what we want to validate to, for this case here is a central optimization here. And let's now see how this would be implemented in the laboratory. Here we have those components. We have active um, OLTC and we have active PV inverters. Um, maybe another component is the phase balancer. And then the smallest component of them all is the coordinating control system, which is supposed to coordinate and rule them all. How do we now evaluate if this system is ready for the market? Um, well, these are connected, these devices are connected at different places. Um, in the physical grid, um, the transformer and the inverters are definitely remote. Um, and in addition to that, we have the coordinating control system, even though it's physically located close to the transformer, it is connected via only measurements and instrumentation. So this lab setup is one possible. We have here a physical distribution network emulated in our laboratory. And we've used our um, control platform to co integrate this coordinated control system. So that makes a power system test. A completely different setup is also imaginable. Um, here we have one suggested by our partners where we have a digital real-time simulation of the distribution network, including several of the photovoltaic inverters, um, battery storages, and now we could imagine a PV inverter being in a hardware in the loop setup um, for power hardware in the loop and the controller um, that was meant as central um, being in a controller hardware in the loop setup. So we have seen two completely different physical realization of a validation um, concept of this same use case. So this brings up the challenge of how are they the same when they are physically so different? And it goes further. In addition to this real-time simulation approach, we also have worked, as Thomas mentioned, uh, with a remote integration of research infrastructure, also for the purpose of testing and validation. Um, we are integrating multi-domain test beds, um, meaning communication, but also thermal electrical couplings. And we are envisioning the widespread use of simulation and co-simulation as one of the means of integrating and getting larger scale scenarios, um, which then also should be part of um, validation efforts. So this gives rise to the holistic test processing procedure that also Thomas has mentioned central in the project, where we are looking from the left of defining a scenario generically to producing results um, that can be reproducible. Now, this has been the initial sketch of how it should run. And during the project, we've developed this definition of the, uh, this holistic testing, which is the process and methodology for the evaluation of a concrete function system or component within its relevant operational context, corresponding to the purpose of investigation. So this definition frames what the holistic test description aims to provide a framework 
for identifying what these specific things that are mentioned here in this definitions, how they relate and how they build up a good scenario. Um, so we'll focus on that part. And when we're looking at um, this holistic testing, we haven't said what we're testing for. So this power system test case that has been um, introduced previously is, is here only number seven, but we can think of the whole chain of testing. Um, so component testing, looking at system concepts, also as in view of testing, and testing software, test is also testing control software, um, doing software in the loop testing in a closed loop, um, integration testing that is also interoperability testing that has gotten a lot of attention in a standards context, um, as well as this advanced hardware and the loop testing, um, which can also be viewed in view of standards. And then finally, the power system testing. So all of these different testing scopes require an understanding of what are we testing for and how does that relate to the test bed. There is a little bit of background um, that we relate to, certainly. And one is the V model for system design and validation, which is a conceptual model on how any um, system design proceeds to a validation. So on the one hand, so if we're going from left to right in time, um, and in the left arm, we have the system requirements. So going initially from client's needs, we have a specification at a high level um, that can then gets broken down into more detailed specifications. And conceptually then on the right arm, um, the system solution is built up from components to subsystems to systems, and then validated against the initial specification. Um, so we have this V model, which has, shows illustrates that there is also a gap in time. And the key of this V model is that, of course, um, you specify requirements initially to then finally also be held up against those. Um, so there is a validation against the initial requirements. However, um, as time proceeds and uh, learning proceeds, there's a good chance that more details are known about the system than were initially. And this is the gap that we are trying to address. You, um, we're trying to provide a method for giving a way of specifying a test out from some functional specifications or other technical specifications that account for much more detail um, before we map it to the lab, uh, laboratory. And this method is aimed at the high level, but it, in theory can should be apply, applicable at the lower levels of specifications as well. So we, to summarize the drivers here, um, we want to achieve a reproducible system validation um, to validate systems and not components. We want to integrate hardware and software testing on these advanced test beds we've described. We want to be able to define tests that combine different domains. And then it's important to systematically design and the test and integrate the results from various exper experiments also across different infrastructures and platforms. So how do we do this? Um, this is the core challenge for our holistic test description to provide these definitions. And to show you what does holistic description test description do, we'll pick up from this initial use case um, or complex um, control problem. Well, in the literature, we have a method for system configuration, which help us defining the components in context of what uh, other components there are in the network, how they are connected both electrically and informationally. Um, so here in the uh, smart grid domain, we, you're familiar with the common information model and the 61850 standard for distribution automation. Similarly, we have a definition of the functions also pro provided the standards for how to define those functions uh, in a use case. The use case then also gives us performance indicators that we should be held up against when we are um, evaluating a system. 
And on top of this, now as an additional layer, um, we provide the test case, which accounts for those interactions and the performance requirements now in terms of the testing objectives. So the purpose of investigation relates, if it is a validation, directly to the use case uh, performance indicators, but frames it as a test. So here we are already providing a quite detailed frame. Um, but one thing you may have noticed from the earlier cases is that these um, control tests, they're not a simple input output. So how do you define what are input parameters and what are test criteria? What is that box? What is the system under test? This is the es essence of what we have been trying to develop in this, what we call the area grid holistic test description method. How does this description look like? Um, it's really helpful to understand the way we layer things here. Um, so the holistic test description is built up in layers and we have on the left-hand side, the templates and the conceptual layers, um, how they relate to each other. And on the right-hand side, an intuition about the system configuration that is in scope of that layer at the High abstraction level, we have on the right side a generic system configuration. So we say that there is a inverter and a distribution network and a voltage controller that are connected, and we say how they are connected. Um, and that corresponds to a specification at the level of use cases. And at that level, we would like to then derive um, test objectives. At the next level, um, the the system now needs to be much more specific. So which component exactly is connected how to other devices and the distribution network, which topology are we investigating specifically? So that's content of the test specification. Here, important to note is that this is independent of the actual lab infrastructure. Now, when we go to the actual lab infrastructure, we need to specify how inside the lab components that are parts of the lab are interconnected. So what we see here in this example is the voltage controller, which we call the object under investigation, um, is mapped as a code directly to a computer in the lab. And that sort of survives. All the other components um, are emulated or represented in the lab. So we have a correspondence here between these layers and these configurations. And to support the development of these layers, we've developed templates. So we have a test case template, um, and we have a test specification template, and we have an experiment specification template. But rather than running you through these templates, we'll go later through these questions on how you can address them at each layer. Um, so not to scare you, but to give you an idea, um, this is the view um, of all the concepts that we've defined in this holistic test description. Um, so it is the same colors and therefore the same concept that we've discussed in the previous, not in, but I would like in the following slides to introduce you to the details of what is in this first top box. And then we will also have a quick look at the, what is called qualification strategy and experiment realization plan. So the key questions that we need to answer for our test specifications are, why are we doing this test? What are we testing? What are we testing for? And then how do are we going to um, carry out that test? And we'll keep this use case in mind that helps us to make it concrete. So the first question is why to test? Um, when we remember the test case, that, that is how we start there. We describe a narrative and the narrative defines why is this test needed in what context, um, what are desired outcomes of the test, and then really gives the relevant context. So in a, in a simple paragraph, describe how these scenarios and use cases and the context relates to a test objective. So this is the narrative form also of the test objective. And then it will be formalized further 
into what we call the pur purpose of investigation or POI. But let's take a look at an example narrative here um, for such a voltage controller, which in this case is phrased to be in a development stage, so it's an early stage testing. And the goal is the performance assessment of this DMS algorithm, but under realistic conditions. Um, so it's an early stage, but it's a stage before a field test. Good, we learned that already from the narrative. So that's why the text is very important um, because we never know what is really important for the text and it's much or for a test if we only look at formal descriptions. But this narrative gives us this context. Now let's formalize a bit further. Um, for that, we have defined the purpose of investigation and we've identified three different categories of purposes of investigation um, that are logically different things. Um, we've mentioned validation a number of times and validation implies a passing or failing. So if some, something is validated, then it's fit for purpose. Verification um, is similar, but it's a more formal verification. It's more the passing of a threshold than a qualitative criterion. A different animal is characterization, which is simply if you want to quantify the performance, something if you want to, if that is the main goal to characterize um, for example, to feedback information into your development process. So it's a form of modeling and of scoring. Here for our example, we could um, apply these categories here. Um, so we've identified that one thing is we want to validate is that the optimization in all relevant cases um, converges. Um, we want to and find out about the performance of the optimization on the realistic conditions. So that is a characterization task. And then we want to identify the accuracy of the status estimation, um, which is part of that DMS controller. That's also a characterization task. Good. So here we are already carrying out our deep into the um, test description. Um, what is the next step? Well, what is it that we are to want to test? Um, we've already encircled it. We want to carry, test this optimization, but how is it embedded in the system? So for this, we've defined these concepts, the system under test, the object under investigation, and the domain under investigation. I'll start from the bottom here. This domain under investigation, in this case, at first seems trivial, of course, it is the distribution grid. No, but it's not just the distribution grid, it is also um, a communication, a remote communication with the different inverters. So, by having this concept in the test description, we can expand the method also to domains where there may be thermal systems are also involved. Um, the object under investigation is there to identify the thing that we want to test and the system under test. And that, that's different from many other um, contexts is not necessarily device under test. So this is motivated by control systems um, where you cannot evaluate the control system directly only, only on um, one component, but you want to actually see its interactions with the rest of the system, evaluate how it does. And that is also then relevant for other power system testing. So defining the objects and investigation as part of the system under test, that is, is an effort, uh, a framework we provide here in the holistic test description. Good, we've defined now a structural component. Well, we haven't defined what it does. That is the domain of system functions. It's also the domain of use cases. Um, here we have a similar distinction. We are distinguishing the functions under test that are implemented in the system under test. Um, so in this use case that we've looked at, um, we need to make sure that all the, um, that the tap changing controller works, that measurements operate, um, and that all of these um, BR, inverters that actually have an operational PQ control. That's not part of what we're testing, but it has to be part of the test setup. And then um, the function under investigation are those that are of the controller. So there were two that were already mentioned uh, or implied. We have the optimization and we have a state estimator. So these functions define now what is to be tested in both in structure and in function. 
the next question. What are we testing for? Um, we've already in, um, formulated this. We have looked at the purpose of investigation. Um, so we already know that we want to test for conversions. We want to test um, for the performance of the controller. And we were looking for um, estimation errors. However, the next step would then be to come derive metrics for these, um, these questions that we investigate. And we find out that often there are several metrics that help us supporting um, to come up with an answer for a purpose of investigation. So just to pick one here on the target metrics um, to identify the performance of the controller, we can look at voltage deviations, the number of tap changes, and at network losses as, as different metrics of the performance. Now we are using this as a frame to then go even deeper into designing that experiment frame. We would like to define what kind of load patterns, what creates this realistic um, environment. So we, we've we stated initially in the narrative that it should be a realistic environment. Now here we have the opportunity to define what is realistic here and define eventually what are the factors in our experiment. Finally, there's the quality attribute, um, which relates in case of validation to say, okay, how much is good enough? It can also be used to define a confidence interval in which our experiments need to be resulted. Um, so this detailing of the test criteria is then also continued into the detailed test specifications, um, which we will not go into now. Last of the main questions is the how to test. Um, and so we have already defined um, the main aspects via the test case. So now we're going deeper into the test specification and experiment specification. Um, as outlined before, the test specification provides the test design and the input output structure um, of our test system. Um, so next would be to define what how it is quantified and actually how we distribute the tests that we want to carry out. Maybe they're not all carried out in one single experiment. Finally, this has to be mapped to the actual, actual experiment setup. So to the answer these questions, um, we have developed um, some tools. Um, the first is to think, okay, maybe there are some generic frameworks for making test designs. Here is an example that we have observed um, that a test design often can have an iterative aspect. And that actually differs if you do a validation or verification or if you do a characterization experiment. So the level of refinement can be different here. Then when you're doing testing, keep in mind the um, Volkswagen. We are not engineering against tech specifications. So when you're looking at this test design, it is actually part of the question of what is what is safe to do. Um, don't update your input parameters or don't update your test system while you're checking the validation, for example. And so um, what we want to want this, this system to be good for is to help a um, clean definition on separation of use case requirements from test specifications. So this cleanliness, uh, cleanliness involves, um, as introduced before, the separation of a test case into something that is to be separating what is intended from what will be implemented in the lab. And so while the left-hand picture is quite intuitive, the right-hand picture allows a more clean separation of these concerns. Further tools that I will not bore you with in detail now, um, but it's good to be aware. Um, we have provided different forms of this test case templates. So this gives a compact overview of what other questions to be answered. And my main remark here should be that 
there's no point in forcing yourself to go sequentially to the template. Um, if you look at this as a canvas, you can start any point where you know something already when you're defining your test, um, you're defining your test case and answer these questions in a, in a brainstorming fashion first before you go into the details. So treat it as a canvas. Um, the next support is the tool which we call the qualification strategy. So it's the question of how does a single test case actually relate? How can it be validated? And we found in, we will see also in the examples later that as many different ways in which a um, test case and the specific purpose of investigations um, can be split up into different tests or subtests. Um, simply because they address different concerns that only together, when they're all confirmed, um, correspond to a validation. So, for example, what we found is that the testbed qualification is a very important part of the validation strategy overall, especially if your testbed is a distributed testbed, um, which has its own um, yeah, complications. So, we'll hear more about that later. Um, and then the last tool to mention is the ergo experiment realization plan. So it's a set of strategies that helps you coming from um, a conceptual design of your test that also goes to a test specification and then says, okay, now I know exactly what I want to test. I have a plan on how to carry it out, but how do I find the right lab for doing it? Um, that may be a luxury problem, but it is a problem we have in AeriGrid. Um, we have created a database for um, all the laboratories involved. And um, if you're going to do an experiment uh, in the context of Ericut, maybe as a transnational access, then you don't always have all of the infrastructure or only one infrastructure available. You could choose between them. So we are offering a strategy for choosing between experimental platforms. That's what this experimental isolation experiment realization plan is about. So finally, the fifth review. Uh, we've seen now what the holistic test case is about. It's about a system under test where you identify the object under investigation um, and the Um, domain under investigation. You have the functions under test and the function under investigation and the purpose of investigation, all leading to defining test criteria. This can be then adopted by a qualification strategy. It can lead to several experiments being defined, maybe even carried out in different test infrastructures. So this is the framework we've developed and that's the framework we're providing here. Um, before I conclude, I would just want to introduce a feature that we have um, discovered um, relevant in the project and actually a bit designed out to toward, and that is a method of design of experiments where we are um, um, able to quantify the experiments and make optimal use of the available infrastructure. So this is a method where you, a mathematical approach, where you can, from a given target of what you're testing, go backward to your input parameters and choose a optimal sampling. And we have found uh, in a paper that's referenced here and then mentioned later, um, that there's actually very nice complementarity between the experiment, uh, definitions that we are defining in using this holistic um, test description and what you need as input to define this method. So um, these two methods are complementary. The holistic test description gives you a qualitative frame, allows you to address any smart grid experiment. And when you've analyzed it properly in holistic test description framework, you're ready to take this information directly into the design of experiments. And it's quite likely that you already have most questions sorted out. We've tried it out with some experience and you can also read it here in this reference. Um, so toward the conclusion, I would like to invite you to 
take a look at the detailed description method description that we've published um, and from there or directly find your way to the guidelines that we are publishing in a, a github repository where you will find more templates and examples um, both from internal and external to the Aircode project so I want to conclude um, with these takeaway points. Smart grid and smart energy system validation requires a more comprehensive view on testing and test suitable. And holistic test description is a framework that offers this. It's domain independent. It facilitates the design of complex tests and it provides the abstraction that supports um, system test designs independent of the test beds complements quantitative designs um, as we've just seen and you are able to find good examples online this is all from my side um if you enjoyed this introduction thank you very much kai for your uh, a nice overview about the uh, holistic validation methods and the corresponding templates and how they should be applied uh, our next speaker, Payam, uh, as I uh, introduced in the beginning, will give us some more uh, details about the experience that we are, have gained over the last couple of uh, years in applying this method in different uh, uh, internal activities, but also in linked projects and also our exchange program, the Transnational Access, where we hosted a couple of uh, external researchers in our uh, laboratories. So the floor is yours, uh, Payam. Uh, you, um, you should switch to uh, your presentation view. That's the uh, wrong one. Uh, okay. Yeah, perfect. Yes, now it's okay. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, thank you, uh, Thomas, for providing some general uh, uh, things about very great projects. And thank you very much from Yukai about uh, speaking about the HTD application. I'm a uh, Payaman, uh, say very high level things about uh, application experience. Uh, actually, uh, there is lots of users that use uh, HTD uh, documentation uh, process. Uh, the first of all, uh, it was the Eric Grid uh, partners Actually, Erigrid uh, has uh, 18 partners from 11 uh, European countries, and uh, most of them are uh, universities or research institutes. So they have lots of research you would have to uh, could run on different laboratories. And there is 19 laboratories in the uh, Erigrid uh, partners, and uh, different kind of projects uh, are applied in the uh, air grid labs this is called the internal uh, joint research uh, activities which is called jras so the main uh, users uh, of uh, the HTT was the jras but it's not limited to the internal uh, partners and uh, there was lots of uh, external uh, partners not included in the very great main partners. It's about uh, 17 uh, projects that uh, came from uh, different countries and different universities. Uh, they applied for using uh, the Erigrid partner labs, uh, these 19 laboratories. Uh, they came and uh, used uh, their studies and uh, some of them used the HDD documentation process. And uh, there was some other external projects uh, uh, which was not uh, included in the uh, Erigrid uh, projects, uh, but uh, those projects was very uh, suited and very, very appropriate for using HTT, uh, some European or some national projects or some IEA scan uh, for testing projects, uh, which I explained in the detail more. The main thing uh, which, uh, which I uh, say about the HTD application is about uh, this graph. Uh, for example, for a smart grid applications, uh, one device sh should pass a different kind of tests or maybe 
should be evaluated in different domains. Uh, so there should be some uh, common uh, procedure for uh, testing and for the documentation of the results. Uh, I give you a, an example. For example, uh, we want to uh, test uh, the characteristics of a voltage controller or any kind of uh, other thing. For example, if we want to uh, evaluate the performance of a voltage controller. Uh, the, the main thing is we have one device and we want to test it uh, in uh, one laboratory. Uh, for example, we want to test uh, this voltage controller on a very common distribution feeder. So we need a laboratory with uh, just uh, some loads uh, which simulate uh, a traditional feeder. So we could run this test, uh, this single test on single laboratory. Uh, but uh, maybe there is some voltage, uh, some control conflict because in the feeder there is some other controllers. So we need uh, to evaluate this test uh, in a laboratory which uh, includes some uh, other uh, controllable devices, maybe renewable devices, some active distribution networks. And maybe this uh, single test uh, will run on multi laboratories to simulate different kind of operating points. Uh, so there should be uh, some testing uh, procedure, some testing documentation, uh, which uh, with the same language between different laboratories. Or even more, uh, some uh, devices such as voltage controller uh, could be uh, tested in different domains. For example, not only we want to examine the performance uh, of a voltage controller on the power system, but also we want to examine its performance on the communication, on the information exchange, and in different ICT or different energy carrier systems. So we need the, the different domains and we need multi-test. Uh, maybe in single laboratory or multi-test in multi-laboratory. Each laboratory provides different facilities, provide different research infrastructure, and in one laboratory we evaluate its communication, in another we evaluate its effect on the power system. And uh, in the best case, we could run all of these uh, by together uh, with a joint big project. And uh, these things are, uh, this uh, actually JRA, which, uh, which is the, about, uh, which is about the uh, in, internal uh, projects, uh, is uh, about these things. Uh, I explained about the, the first one, but the other one uh, was exactly these things, and uh, it's it speak about the different uh, applications in different domains. So uh, HDD is completely relevant for applying in this kind of projects. Uh, there is lots of uh, TA uh, projects, which means uh, all projects uh, that came inside the uh, regret projects about uh, 70, and it was a lot uh, and. Uh, External lab users uh, apply these uh, descriptions and get um, lots of interesting uh, feedbacks. Uh, actually, uh, this Kato is uh, one of the users. It said uh, the preparation work helped us a lot. Actually, it's, it's very important uh, because uh, this template is also useful for our users team to exchange ideas in an organized and effective way. This is very important to be organized and effective. Uh, and uh, this is some uh, external uh, European projects. Uh, the first one, it was uh, the Electra. Electra is uh, prototypically evaluate the proposed web of cells, real-time control approach and its corresponding control schemes related to voltage and balancing control. 
uh, in this uh, project, uh, 15 different simulation laboratory based experiments with a corresponding testing criteria. Uh, and regarding this matter, uh, using HTT is so relevant to this project. Other uh, European uh, projects that use uh, HTD was uh, seamless. Uh, it pro in these projects, uh, the modeling and optimizing of different smart systems and configurations, including uh, several energy carriers, uh, energy storages, and renewable energy technologies were used here. And regarding this matter, HTD used here. Um, actually, in this project, a very detailed uh, test cases uh, for enabling uh, to reproduction of the simulations uh, is occurred, especially for the users that don't know the infrastructure. Uh, another European uh, project uh, was uh, SmartNet. Uh, in this uh, project, uh, its aims was uh, developing different architecture for optimizing the interactions between uh, transmission uh, organization and DSOs and uh, multi-domain tests considering network models and ICT and electricity market structures was implemented. And uh, due to this uh, multi-domain and multi-test in different countries, Italy, Denmark and Spain, the HTD was uh, suited in these projects a lot. Uh, but different uh, uh, system under test of uh, the early grid, uh, this, uh, uh, this uh, uh, system under test of the just the TA projects, uh, the 17 uh, projects that use the, the HTT application, uh, we uh, cluster the different uh, system under test into uh, six systems. The most of them uh, was uh, implemented on the uh, microgrid and uh, uh, some uh, testers was under just uh, a device level. They uh, test is just one controller, one uh, inverter, or the performance of a transformer. And uh, some of them are uh, considered uh, in a smart building. And this is just a system under test. In which system their test was uh, performed. Some of them uh, was in the level of uh, low voltage uh, active distribution network, which was uh, bigger than uh, the microgrid, which uh, was the medium, uh, the low voltage, uh, but in a smaller case, or it could be run in the islanded mode. And uh, some of them uh, was in the upstream network and considered the medium voltage active distribution network. And some of them was uh, in completely different uh, domain and different system. And it, co it considered a SCADA system, which include more the communication networks. Uh, but the different uh, domain uh, was investigated in different uh, studies. And uh, then uh, one important point here is uh, one study may be run on uh, some domains or different domains. Uh, as I uh, said, for example, uh, for the voltage controller, the voltage controller not uh, only evaluated in the power system, but also it's evaluated uh, from the control uh, perspective, from the communication perspective. And uh, in our uh, TA projects, uh, all of them uh, was uh, tested on the electric power systems, but some of them uh, was uh, the control system, some of them uh, was about the communication system, and uh, some of the projects uh, considered the economic aspect of the, uh, <coughs> the economic aspect and considered the electricity markets. Uh, but uh, for the conclusion, there is some uh, advantages 
and there is some things that could be done uh, more and for the future works. Uh, the main uh, things uh, is uh, it makes experiment uh, realization implementation comparable or in the complex uh, test cases it detailed uh, preparation can result in their faster implementation it uh, using HTT helping users understand the test more comprehensive and common understanding uh, of the thesis among different uh, research thesis means the test cases among different research infrastructures partners and uh, there's a um, very insightful uh, quote from one of the aggregate participants that uh, make a uh, sense for all of this is uh, can I just say that is uh, very nice to get these questions sorted out now rather than uh, when you are sitting down and have to implement something it means that it means that it's better to fill in the forms uh, now and uh, after that everything is ready for going to the laboratory and in the laboratory everything is clear but uh, there is some uh, things that uh, for future work it actually these things are from the feedbacks of the regret partners of the projects that use the HCD and uh, they need uh, some of some more clarification uh, they said the, the methodology should have a more clear description because this is a new concept for most of the participants and a manual or a more detailed manual because there is manual or more detailed manual is uh, easy to read which also includes several examples could assist in that direction or the large number of uh, similar concepts and definitions make difficult to implement the methodology uh, because as uh, Kai says the system under test the object of their under investigation the purpose under investigation all of them are some kind of similar and it was confusing for some of the participants and uh, they need more example and uh, clarifications uh, for the future Okay, thanks, uh, Thomas. I think uh, now uh, it's. Uh, Thank you, Payam, uh, for your uh, mm -hmm. report on the experiences uh, of this uh, validation methodology in the project uh, itself, but also in related projects and our exchange program. And uh, now, last but not least, uh, Merkebu uh, will give us some more insights about uh, an ex um, example case where we should um, give you more details about how the method can be applied to a specific uh, test scenario. I will handle over uh, the presenter rights to Merkebu. Hello everyone, can you see my slide, uh, Thomas? Yes. Great, please go ahead. Thank you. Uh, my name is Merk Kabu. I'm a research, uh, researcher in Synthep Energy in Norway. Uh, I'm going to present a couple of examples from uh, testing activities in AeroGrid. So we have seen this uh, figure before from Payam uh, showing what, what uh, were the test activities in one of our work, joint research activities and this work package then in the project. You can see the details of these test cases. There will be actually a webinar coming in, uh, in November 26. Uh, there will be more information about that. I will be focusing on two of these test cases. The one which is highlighted in red, TCS1, and the one which is highlighted in green, TCM1. I will uh, sh show the de detailed use cases of this holistic test description methodology. Um, Without further ado, I will go directly to TCS1, which is a, a kind of abbreviation we are using in, in inside the project. Uh, it's a testing of converter controllers through multi-site testing chain with varied test beds. So first, the narration. So the narration is that we have a RMS converter controller, which is part of converter controller 
uh, with inner current controller and group controller for voltage regulation, connecting PV uh, to a distribution system, which has some other loads connected to it also. So the idea here is that the, the test system here is to, to characterize and validate uh, the RMS converter controller. And so based on this uh, narration, we, we start to, to develop the details of the test, starting from the test case uh, description to the test specification and to a further experiment specification. So I will, I will go through the thought process, how we uh, map our ideas and uh, the thought process of developing this uh, test, uh, specific test into details of uh, uh, implementation plans. So first the, the test, the test case, uh, it, as it, you have seen from the descriptions from Kai and also a little bit from Pi, uh, Pi um, the, the main points here is first you just say the narrative of the test. So here, for example, it, this, uh, this test case aims to add demonstrating the potential of multi-site testing chain with various test beds for generating systematic improvements on the performance of converter controller function. So we have the RMS converter controller. We would like to test it in a test in a test chain setup uh, to use the specific capabilities of different test beds. Uh, and and in, the, in general, we have a purpose of investigation at system level. Uh, those purpose of investigations uh, with abbreviation of POI are listed in three here. The first POI one is characterizing of converter controller. Uh, it's influence in the system performance of voltage regulation. So this uh, system level uh, pur uh, purpose of investigation uh, is also broken down into uh, three or and four different uh, test bed level purpose of investigations, uh, which all aim to uh, fulfill the, the main system level purpose of investigation. And then we have further uh, two system level purposes. One is validation of model exchange among uh, research infrastructures. So as I have, I'm, I'm saying, I will go in detail in the next slide, but. Uh, the idea is to implement this test in a, in a form of test chain by developing test beds, which are, and to utilize specific capabilities of these test beds. So, um, model exchange will be part of this test chain activity. So, we can consider it as a purpose of investigation here. Also, the valid validity of uh, exchanging models for purpose of uh, implementing tests in different uh, research infrastructures. And then we have further one more test uh, test uh, system level purpose of investigation, which is validating uh, the imp improvement of con converter controller performance. So by doing a first round test, uh, we, we, would like, we would like to improve the performance of the controller. And then again, with a second round test, we would like to validate whether the performance is there. So this system has also uh, domain, two dom involves two domains, uh, specifically electric power domain and controller domain. The details of the, the test case specification here is it is here it is only the summary of it, but you can find online in the GitHub uh, the details of it, and it will be included also in the deliverable uh, of the GRAs coming. Um, so the test chain we selected three uh, test beds. Uh, uh, one is a pure simulation implementation for this, uh, and then the second one is a controller hardware in the loop. And then the third one is a power hardware in the loop. So um, you are you can see these specific test beds and implementations have their own uh, peculiar uh, be, um, capabilities. For example, the things you can characterize and validate using pure simulation is different from the things you can characterize and validate using power hardware in the loop test bed or test system. So in the first narration, as I said, we would like to characterize and validate the RMS converter controller uh, and using these test beds and then with the aim of improving it and again, validating the improvement. So these three uh, processes uh, are highlighted here in green. The first process where we run a simulation, the simulation will prepare the load profiles and 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 uh, and other needed input for the subsequent test implementations and the controller hardware in the loop and power hardware in the loop uh, will will run their own tests and based on their specific test based uh, based uh, based uh, uh, purpose of investigations they propose improvements for the converter controller and then the pure simulation will uh, 
uh, verify which improvement will be more valid and then gives again to implement uh, to validate these uh, improvements with the two tests control hardware in the loop and power hardware in the loop so this thought process of uh, identifying how many tests we need here in order to fulfill the purpose of investigation as it is described in the test case it's called a qualification strategy so here with the aim of fulfilling the purpose of investigation of the test we will, we will identify what kind of tests we need and what is the relationship between the tests in this case because it is a test chain where the input and output of the different tests are dependent in one another uh, here you can see um, with the inclusion of uh, the force pure hardware implementation which was part of the original plan but in the end we uh, we were uh, uh, able to, to implement pure simulation control hardware in the loop and power hardware in the loop test uh, i will go in one of the leg the outer leg uh, from the test case the test case description you have seen it in the first slide and then the next one is this uh, ts4 which is one of the test beds uh, uh, involving power hardware in the loop implementation. It has its own test based based POI or purpose of investigation, which is aiming to fulfill the first pur purpose of investigation system level, uh, with, uh, trying to characterize the converter controller. So specifically for this test specification, we have the uh, test based uh, purpose of investigation, which is char to characterize stability of converter controller hardware in closed loop full power system testing, uh, stability of converter controller under harmonic disturbance in the system. So this uh, the, the closed loop power hardware in the loop setup will give a spe specific capability to, to validate the stability of the controller by in introducing, in introducing harmonics. In this case, we introduce some FIPS harmonics and then run the test uh, see the in performance of the converter controller. So this will be part of the purpose of investigation, fulfilling the system level uh, characterization of the converter controller to have the full picture per per performance of the controller. So further, after specifying this test specification, it is independent of research infrastructure or which uh, laboratory we are going to use, what device specifically we are going to use. So this is further um, uh, developed into experiment specification using the third template. So this one is the test specification template we used. The third one, which is experiment specification, the thought process from the test specification to the experiment specification is the uh, experiment realization plan as it is described by Kai. Kai and it means uh, mapping all of the test specification to a specific research infrastructure uh, associated with the specific uh, components in the lab. So here you can see the power hardware in the loop, the setup implemented with a, a low voltage network, which is actually essentially a modified version of CGRE low voltage network. It, 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 uh, the network is simulated in OPART in real time, and then it is uh, linked with a, a grid emulator, which is a 200 kilowatt per uh, power com converter, essentially, uh, and connecting a converter hardware, a physical converter hardware, which is six, 60 kilowatt two level converter. And, and, and then the uh, characterization and the validation is performed by using this test setup, which is a power hardware in the loop test setup. So you can see very specific uh, detail uh, information is provided in the experiment specification, showing even the schematics of the connectivity of the, the actual devices, the ratings of the devices, and then the experiment design and justification tells like, um, what are the specific sequence of the tests and um, whether the step up and step down of power um, and further it goes also with uh, specifying how much uh, power is going to be um, uh, step up or down emulating the PV generation. So this is one of the, um, uh, the cases we implemented in Aerogrid. Uh, I will go further to do the next example which is TCM1 point two which is relevant uh, the you can forget the the short form but the main point here we are we had a test uh, for testing a web service provided by one research infrastructure using data from another research infrastructure so this uh, test setup the narration is goes as, as uh, like this we have two research infrastructures one is providing a state estimation service uh, as a kind of web service for another research infrastructure with the, the real hardware and uh, network components in the lab. So 
um, the, the, there will be information exchange re regarding the connectivity or the, the, the structure of the network, as well as measurements needed for the state estimation. Uh, to, to, to run this communication platform, we have developed gender level two communication uh, method, uh, use, which uses uh, the same uh, common information uh, model approach to exchange a measurement and uh, network structure data information. So in, to the right, you can see another schematic, uh, which, uh, which is showing two research infrastructures. So essentially, we can have a third research infrastructure providing measurements for the, as part of the network, the full network, which is in research infrastructure one, and then the research infrastructure one, together with the network structure and the measurements, it gives the needed in input information for the state estimator, which is running in a third research infrastructure. So as a basic setup of this uh, system, we can have research infrastructure and research one and two being one research infrastructure and on the, the third one will uh, like as a second research infrastructure. So here you can see a lot of uh, systems are um, uh, need to be established in order to to realize this experiment so we have the communication uh, architecture itself uh, that's how to uh, exchange information like measurement from one research infrastructure to another research infrastructure using the common information model method uh, the same uh, approach and uh, again we we have also how to use the same uh, the informa uh, information exchange to run state estimation, and then what is the impact of the information communication lag, latency, and so on. So this test system has to be broken down into specific uh, investigations first, whether the communication works, whether the state estimator works, and then whether the whole system works. So this big test system is divided into specific uh, further uh, so test systems uh, and, and then uh, further to experiment specification. So in order to realize this kind of complex test systems, the, the test description, holistic test description template uh, really uh, will be very useful for, for to guide the thought process of planning of this test system into, uh, into practice. So for this specific test case, um, we have uh, the test case as uh, template filled in, as you can see it in the slide here. Uh, it's also a short-term version of it. So the, for this test system, we have main ob objectives. One is validating the state est estimator web service. Uh, the second one is validating of the virtual research infrastructure. That's how um, uh, having uh, research infrastructures av available as a as a, a virtual network uh, with using the same based approach as a virtual measurement point if they are providing measurement also may maybe as a virtual web service providing research infrastructure like state estimation so in order to validate the state estimator web service that's the system level poi we have further for uh, we have broken down this big problem of validating the state estimator web 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 service into four specific uh, tangible components for the or, or tangible uh, uh, purpose of investigations or they are called here test based uh, test bed based POIs fulfilling the system level purpose of investigation so the first one is as i say characterizing the gender level 2 performance that's basically uh, the communication architecture be uh, between uh, for exchanging measurement and network information it, it is a sim based approach the second one is verifying the gender level 2 uh, sim model configuration the uh, third one is characterizing the sim state estimator uh, separately the state estimator itself and then the fourth one is characterizing the state estimator web service as a whole so it involves uh, the, it may have in these uh, circumstances it may have the uh, system under investigation might be different for example for the first one uh, which is characterizing of the gender level two performance we may not need to use the state estimator at this point we can just validate the gender level two um, communication architecture by using uh, the communication of measurements between two research infrastructure and uh, when we are characterizing the state estimator of course we can characterize the state estimator alone uh, whether it can perform by using the same based information exchange of network and measurement information and so by 
by dividing or partitioning this big test system into tangible specific components, we will be able to tackle the whole um, um, or validate or characterize the whole system. So this is this is the thought process. First, we, we divide how to tackle it in a test case, and then this uh, test case is uh, based on the the four test based based purpose of investigations we will define the specific test specifications as you can see here ts1 ts2 ts3 ts4 uh, so they are specifically targeting the test based uh, be, test based uh, test bed based pois here the four pois they are also again fulfilling the system level pui so it 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 keeps the purpose of investigation the main purpose of investigation intact while dividing it into tangible components here in four uh, test based test bed based pois and so further each test uh, specifications may have different experimental realizations um, for for each of them so you can tcr stands here for the test criteria so each test specifications to, to fulfill each purpose of investigations we will define test criteria so what criteria has to be fulfilled uh, to 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 um, to match the purpose of investigation so again i will i will just show here uh, the thought process so from the test case to the four test specifications uh, the thought process of partitioning the big test system into tangible components is a qualification strategy that will be a handy uh, method to, to 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 think this through and then uh, the mapping strategy it, it refers to how to uh, to select the right component to fulfill the test specification you may just say okay i will have a load here i will have a converter here and then you have to say at some point what the converter what level converter is it mmc over is it two level converter um what kind of load are you is it a resistive load how much is it this kind of very specific uh, um, mapping of the test system into experiment system is going to be carried out here. Uh, so I will just show one experiment specification. If you follow this leg, the outer leg from test case to test TS1, TCS1 and experiment uh, ES1. So this experiment specification it targets to to fulfill to to, to address the purpose of the test bed purpose of investigation uh, related to TS1, which is to characterize the gender level two performance. So the title of experiment here is latency of updating data on cloud, rad cloud radius. So um, here the, um, the target of maybe, yeah, the, s s there are variability attributes, uh, at, uh, what kind of variability you can induce in order to realize this test system, uh, what, what kind of tests setup you need that's the experiment realization uh, what will be the sequence of doing the test here it is expressed and what are, how you measure the uncertainty at the end of the table you can see it, it depends uh, on the network uh, time uh, ntp synchronization uh, which uh, less than 100 milliseconds and clock drift on machines and how you store also the data, it is uh, defined here. So for somebody who like to replicate these days, it will be a clear guideline from the test case to the test specification to experiment specification. Uh, these are the two examples of the, the details of the implementation and the, the results will be provided or presented in a coming a webinar. Uh, maybe Thomas will uh, tell a bit about it. Uh, this is what I have uh, for today. Thank you. Thank you, Makabu. Uh, one moment, I will change back to my presentation. Yeah, I hope you get an overview about our validation, our holistic validation and testing method that we have developed in the project. Uh, you can see here some further readings. They are part of the uh, handouts that we share with you later. Um, some papers, some deliverables, uh, which we have uh, developed, which emerged out, emerged out of the uh, uh, of this part of the project work. And moreover, you can find also corresponding information uh, directly on the GitHub, the templates if you want to use them. 
Uh, moreover, we share the webinar material online on our Zenodo community. You will get the link uh, later on uh, today. And as Merkip already expressed, we are organizing a follow-up uh, webinar uh, called Demonstration of Multi-Research Infrastructure Integration Tests, uh, which will take place on November 26 at 2 p.m. Uh, Central European time. Uh, the link is also uh, for registration is provided here. You can find it also on our project website. Uh, so you're kindly invited to join us also uh, for this webinar in about one month. Uh, so that's uh, more or less all from, from our side. Uh, <clears throat> in principle, we have time for some questions now. Uh, up to now, I don't see any uh, questions that emerged out uh, of the webinar. You still have time to, to uh, ask some. Please put in the uh, chat window and uh, we will see them. Feel free to use this uh, um, functionality and ask some questions. Please feel also free to use our approach uh, for your own research activities. At the end, it turned out it's quite helpful for us in preparing uh, our testing uh, and validation activities in our labs, but also uh, for simulation-based uh, uh, validation activities. It's a nice structured way to think about before you do an experiment uh, what you really want to do. It gives you some structured uh, view um, and uh, guides you through the whole uh, validation um, um, procedure. I don't see any questions, so looks that everyone is uh, is fine. You can also, if you don't have any questions for now, you can also uh, contact us uh, after the end of the of the webinar and ask us specific questions. Uh, <clears throat> please feel free to look also at uh, the further readings um, uh, slide, which gives you some more details. Also the uh, documents uh, which describe the uh, details of the uh, methodology uh, is available there. Since there are not, uh, no questions that are coming in, uh, I think we can finalize the uh, and quit uh, and finish the uh, webinar now. I want to thank all the presenters, uh, Merkebu, um, Payam and Kai very much for presenting our methodology and I thank also all the attendees that uh, take place uh, in this webinar. Thank you very much and you will receive very soon uh, some more details uh, about the recordings uh, and the presentation from our side. Thank you very much for joining this Irrigate Grid webinar and we hope to uh, have your attendance also in our upcoming webinar by the end of November. Thank you very much.